Hi, Kiahi Palayo here, and today is the first of a series of videos setting up the background and the future of the National Association of Realtors settlement that was made um, recently and will soon, knock on wood, be confirmed by the court overseeing the settlement. I want to start today with the background and the history of commissions in real estate. Years ago, when just on the cusp of when I got in the business, the seller paid all of the commissions and the buyer received no representation and everyone at the Association of Realtors and the Board of Realtors represented the seller. And the reason was the seller was paying the commission and under the law at the time, whoever paid the commission was the one receiving representation. That created a problem because many times buyers thought they were getting rep representation when in fact they weren't. Then about 40 years ago, it switched to this idea of disclosed agency where upfront you would tell a buyer that you represent them and the way things changed is the seller wasn't paying the commission Technically, what would happen is me as a listing broker, I would go out, take a listing, have the seller sign a contract at let's say 6% commission. And then in that listing agreement, it said I was to offer the buyer's broker a compensation fee of 3%, let's say. And the way that it worked mechanically was the seller would pay my firm I would have a separate agreement with the buyer's firm. And then once we were paid, the buyer's firm would be paid. And that's how they got around the seller paying everybody and having all of the representation. And we've had that for well over 30 years, maybe 35 years in the business. And it worked out pretty well. The seller had a contract. They listed the property for sale and then there would be a separate agreement with the buyer's broker. But here's the caveat. Most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, there was no contract between the buyer and their broker. And most old time brokers didn't even think about having a contract. As the soonest you would get something in writing that said you represented the buyer was when you were writing the offer for the buyer and on page one, you stipulated that you were representing the buyer. But there was no written contract that clarified that the buyer owed me anything, how I was gonna get paid or anything else like that. There was an implied agency because we all, we all mutually agreed to it, but no contracts the majority of the time. And it was very, very rare for a buyer to pay any commission to their broker. Now in my 40 some years in doing this, only once had I ever had a buyer compensate me. And that was on a commercial deal and that's more, more common in the commercial environment. But in the residential environment, it was very rare for a buyer to compensate their broker. Now that's the background. That's where we're currently at today. We're still working under that system. That, that buyer, that seller's broker takes a listing, a portion of that commission is paid to the buyer, it's offered to the buyer through the multiple listing service, and that's a binding fee if it's offered through the listing, multiple listing service. And it's rare for that buyer to have a contract with their broker. Now in my next video, I'm gonna talk about where we're actually at right now with the pending settlement and how things are working. And then after that, we're going to talk about if the settlement is approved, what we're going to do moving forward from there. All right. In the meantime, if you have any specific questions that you want to chat with me about, feel free to reach out to me. Love to talk to you about any specific questions and see if I can help you understand the process or help you make a better choice in your real estate acquisition or sale. In the meantime, you have a great day.